Hello, and welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show, a podcast to help you unlock tremendous growth for your app. My name is Shaman Rao. I'm the CEO of the boutique growth marketing firm, Rocketship HQ, and host of the podcast, Mobile User Acquisition Show. In each episode, we feature experts in the field of mobile growth and discuss strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile growth marketing. By the end of each episode, you will have gained actionable and tactical insights that will help you make more informed decisions in your own work around growth. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is produced by Meryl Vincent, Content Marketing Manager at Rocketship HQ. Today's episode covers a topic that I address in a lot more detail in our new book, The Definitive Guide to Meta Creative Testing in a Post-Identifier World, which covers every aspect of how to run creative tests post-ATT, so you can run your tests in a world of incomplete data to discover winning ads with confidence. You can check out the book at rocketshiphq.com slash playbooks. There is also the link to the book in the show notes. A very common and often frustrating phenomenon in meta ads is that a small number of ads oftentimes get a lion's share of ad spend. This is often frustrating when ads that you want to see statistical significance for do not get enough spend and performance and it's hard to do apples to apples evaluation of different ads unless you set up different specific split testing campaigns. So today I'm gonna explain why Meta's algorithm behaves this way. So you can understand and adapt to these changes in your testing and performance. Let's start by understanding the disadvantages of having each ad get the same number of impressions. Number one is that if each ad gets the same number of impressions, oftentimes the worst performing ad will get as many impressions as the best, better performing ad. So your overall performance is going to be far worse than it would be than, than it would be if your best ad got the most spent and the other ads got lesser amounts of spent. This is, and that's number one. The second is a subtler point but it is that oftentimes different ads are better for different users. So ad A might be better for some users. For example, ad A might be better for men over 50 because it speaks directly to them. And these people might comprise 50% of your audience. Ad B might be better for a different segment of users. Let's just say women between 20 and 30 who might comprise 10% of your audience. You, in this case, you want men over 50 to see ad A, which speaks to them, and women between 20 and 30, you want them to see ad B, which you know speaks directly to them. So you want to have, so you will have an unequal allocation of spends and impressions between ads, depending on the sizes of the different segments of users. Right? So that's why having equal spend and impression allocation isn't the most ideal. So how does the spend and impression allocation happen in practice? So Facebook's algorithm uses a probabilistic Bayesian testing paradigm, which basically uses past information about performance, in this case called priors, Mm -hmm. uh, which in this case would be spend or uh, impressions by ads in an ad set. And it uses these uh, priors to make future predictions In this case, these would be conversions or revenue. And this way, the algorithm finds the optimal combination of priors that lead to maximum outputs. In this case, the algorithm's goal is to find the optimal combination of spends distributed among different ads that will result in the maximum revenue or the maximum conversions. So assuming all ads are brand new in the very beginning, the algorithm has no information about priors, has no information about the performance history of the ads. And at this point, the algorithm distributes impressions more or less evenly among all ads in an ad set. But as soon as the algorithm starts to learn and infer which ad has a higher probability of leading to conversions or revenue, it starts to give more impressions to ads that are performing and less impressions to ads with a lower probability of leading to conversions or revenue. 
right? Uh, and obviously, the more information the ad, uh, the algorithm has about the, these probabilities, the better it performs. So the algorithm also tries to find the right balance between exploration and exploitation. So with exploration, the algorithm tries to give impressions to new ads that may not have a lot of past history in order to put, discover potential winners for the future. And with exploitation, the algorithm is doubling down on a proven ad to maximize performance. As you can imagine, this system can have inaccuracies and challenges. Oftentimes, Meta doesn't have enough performance history on all ads to calculate prob probabilities accurately. And at other times, Meta's probability calculations can be thrown off by data delays post ATT. But in spite of these imperfections, I hope this, this episode gives you some insight into why Meta's algorithm behaves the way it does and why this leads to better outcomes than offering the same number of impressions to each ad in an ad set. And uh, today's episode covered a topic that I address in a lot more detail in our new book, The Definitive Guide to Meta Creative Testing in a Post-Identifier World, which covers every aspect of how to run creative tests post-ATT, so you can run your tests in a world of incomplete data to discover winning ads with confidence. You can check out the book at rocketchiphq.com slash playbooks. There's also the link uh, to the book in the show notes below. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog, rocketchiphq.com slash blog.